بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وآل آله وأصحابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Between the narration السفر قطعة من العذاب Traveling is a portion of punishment سافر تسح Travel there are multiple benefits including health. When somebody hears us, it seems to be in our understanding, the weakness of our understanding contradiction, some conflict or clash between these two narrations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give our muhaddithin commentators of hadith, jazai khair, they've never not left any stone unturned in exhausting every avenue to bring Qur'an and Hadith to us in its pristine form. So they've mentioned فَلَا تَعَارُفْ بَيْنَ الْحَدِيثَيْنِ الشَّرِيفَيْنِ There's no contradiction. Why? Because هذه المشقة تعقبها سحة وعافية Because although there may be some difficulty but it comes with benefits كَالْدَوَاءِ الْمُرِّ يَأْخُذُهُ الْمَرِيدِ A ill person taking butter medication فِيهِ الشِّفَاء Although it is difficult to take the medication but the result is cure and remedy. So traveling has its benefits but we have to identify the niyyah and the intention behind it. So one is طَلَبُ الْرِسْكِ to travel for sustenance, we've done the three types. الذي جعل لكم الأرض ظلولا فامشوا في مناكبها وكلوا من رزقه. So this bounty of risk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you need to travel for it, then fine, because this risk you will use it to uplift the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then طلب العلم Seeking beneficial knowledge من سلك طريقا يلتمس فيه علما Seeking knowledge Likewise a traveler He is مستجاب الدعوات His dua is accepted ثلاث Three people their duas are accepted One is ودعوة المسافر A traveler's dua is accepted and in another narration of Hazrat Abu Umama, a person came and said, Ya Rasulullah, اِذَن لِي فِي السِّيَاهَ Give me permission to travel, allow me to travel. So Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam replied, إِنَّ السِّيَاهَ تَأُمَّتِي الْجِهَادْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ The tourism of my ummah is striving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our travel should not be in vain. It should not be for frivolous activities. It should not be for ma'asiyat and disobedience. It should not be for amusement. But we should always check our intention. Malana Yusuf Rahlala used to say, Tum makhluk dekne tiqabil nahi hai jab tak ke khalik nazar na aye. You are not worthy, eligible to look at the creation. Until you do not see the Creator, Mazaire Qudrat, Afala Yanduruna Ilal Ibili Kaifa Khuliqat. So, when we do travel, make sure that in the creation we see the Creator. Likewise, in Surah Tawbah, At Ta'ibun al Abidun al Hamidun al Sa'ihun. Sa'ihun. The travelers, Abdullah ibn Masood, ibn Abbas, Abu Huraira, رضي الله عنهم إن السائهين هم السائمون وأن تفسير The fasting people Those people that fast And in fasting is a lesson for a traveler Because you abstain And when there's time for enjoyment, you enjoy In this world we are travelers, we need to fast and when we die, it will be the time of iftar. Other ulama like Zaid bin Aslam etc. have mentioned 
هم الذين يسافرون لطلب الحديث والعلم those people who travel to seek knowledge and hadith likewise in surah tahrim allah subhanahu wa speaks about the wives of this ummah muslimat mu'minat qanitat ta'ibat abidat and sa'ihat sa'ihat again this word comes so with regards to this Shaykh al-Islam Allama ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah has mentioned that with regards to siyaha yal khuruj when you go out without any purpose no dini purpose falaysat min amalin it is not considered an amal for this ummah نيكوز امام احمد بن حمد رحمه الله ليست السياحة من الاسلام في الشيء there is no portion of travel tourism entertainment in islam ولا من فعل النبيين ولا الصالحين it was not the habit of the صلحاء no انبياء so travel for a believer is with a purpose like the hadith explains striving in the path of Allah Alam ibn Qayyim in his hadith al-arwa has mentioned in an interesting point that the, the commentators have mentioned whether it is fasting, whether it is seeking knowledge, whether it is striving in Allah's path whether it is the obedience of Allah وَالتَّحْقِيقْ فِيهَا أَنَّ السِّيَاحَ الْقَلْبْ فِي ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَحَبَّتِهِ وَالْإِنَابَةِ إِلَيْهِ That this traveling is the heart which is engaged in the dhikr of Allah, in the love of Allah, inclining to Allah. وَالشَّوْقْ إِلَىٰ لِقَائِهِ That uh, having an ambition to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything which connects one to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the correct travel وَلِذَلِكَ وَصَفَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ نِسَاءَ النَّبِيِ اللَّاتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had described the perfect wife for the Nabi of Allah that they are sa'ihat that these people whose hearts are drowning in the love of Allah and the fear of Allah وَالْإِنَابَتْ إِلَيْهِ وَذِكْرِهِ and their hearts are connected to Allah and to the zikr of Allah. So travel which will take you closer to Allah will be allowed and permissible and that is the objective for traveling. So we will travel but we need to preserve our deen and we need to protect ourselves, our family, our assets so that there is no compromise in obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this time is an amana, and it is said beautifully, time reveals the conquerors from the defeated. Time reveals the conquerors from the defeated. So if you look after your time well, you will conquer many lands, conquer many hearts, conquer Jannah. Otherwise it is defeat. So we need to know what needs to be done. We need to prep, we need to uh, uh, do what steps and implement what needs to be done. Don't leave any room for error. Try your best. Give it all you got. Like they say, a person was walking on the street wearing one shoe. So somebody went up to him and said, have you lost your shoe? He said, no, I just found one. No, I just found one. So what do you think and what's the reality? It's two different ball games. Somebody said, I saw a woman wearing a sweatshirt wherein it was marked guess. So another lady told her, thyroid problem, thyroid problem. I'm going to guess, right? So the, con the people out there are everywhere. Never underestimate anybody when you're traveling as well. Never underestimate anybody. So there's a teenager boy, a youngster with spiked hair, a nose ring, baggy combat trousers and he addressed his friend and said I don't really like dressing like this 
but it stops my parents from dragging me everywhere with them. Because I look so bad, they won't take me where they want to go, so I get away. Imagine what level of thinking. So the con. So when traveling, person may be in, in a, a, their residence, so always keep your key ready as you approach the room. Be quick, be efficient, don't linger in hallways, corridors. And it's good to learn important words for the country you are in, the language. So the word to say no, police, help. Likewise, try to be at least with one person or a group. Never travel alone unless there is necessity. And if you have to be alone, then take the precautions. Then you may be lost asking for directions. So go to somebody who has a official capacity or a establishment which is credible. Sometimes you ask the wrong person, they'll give you directions to a place where they want to ambush you or they'll tell you come with me and they eventually rob this person. Likewise all these fancy watches, jewelry, know where to take it and when to use it. If you have to carry valuables while traveling, keep them hidden. Keep them in a safe place. If, if, it's, if a person has a residence, then find a place there. Sometimes a person is staying at a hotel. Your bags are not safe. The hotel safe is not safe. So the safe is unsafe. So find a place in the room where you could stash it and hide it. So even if the cleaners come, they wouldn't look in that place. But such a place. So have your hiding place in every place, residence, where you stay on travel. Keep your own secret hiding place. Likewise, when traveling, the taxi drivers that are very talkative, give them the least information. If you can't beat them, confuse them. Then back home, nobody should have a clue that you are away. So between family, relatives and neighbors, try to make sure information does not leak out. Then when going into a certain country, Try to make friends with the local people. So have your connection with the masjid, with the imam, the local business people also. Anything that you want to do, even if it's a business, run it by the locals. Sometimes we go around long cut. Eventually if you had to just discuss it with one local, it could have saved you years of difficulties and millions of losses being preserved. So this is not only essential, it's, it's uh, quintessential. It's part of, of, of experiencing uh, the minimum loss to the locals. Have, have, make, make a connection with somebody reliable and credible. And your best place is the Masjid, the Islamic center. Likewise, if you have to leave your room, then take basic necessities, travel light. Your bag that you carry in when, it's, when you feel it's risk or areas where you need to be precautious, then the sling bag should be in the front of you with your hand over it. Nobody can grab and run. So uh, even your, your valuables, your passport, money that you are carrying, cards, it shouldn't be loose in a bag. So you have something that's on your body. You've got those neck bags which is inside, which somebody cannot snatch. There's different ways. Uh, bags which are camouflage under your clothing. So emergency cash also is important to keep. So put a budget in your travel for emergency cash. It should be stashed somewhere, whether it's stitched in your clothing, stitched in your bag, but emergency cash. Then your health is important as well, so be cautious of the food that you eat, the water. Try to take food from home, if that's not possible, be cautious where you eat. Try to prepare your own food. Pay uh, more important to places where you eat. Food poisoning is quite common, so your street vendors, they recycle the oil, they recycle a lot of things and uh, try to eat a peelable fruit. So bottled water as well. Uh, when you dispose of your bottled water, try to damage it, break it up. Because they go these, to these uh, dumps and people collect them and fill them with normal tap water and come back and sell it to you. So they're using normal water and it looks like it's brand new, but it's not. So go to proper established places. 
Then a, a first aid kit is very important as well. So basic first aid kit when traveling. Then when you arrive also, make sure you don't rely on your phone. So have the details of your hotel written down in black and white with the language of the country, directions in that language as well. Sometimes the battery is dead and you cannot find a station to charge and that uh, makes a person incapacitated. Likewise, when you depart from your hotel, keep the directions, keep the card, keep the room number safe. Don't rely on the smartphone only. And then there are many, various types of scams. One is the taxi broken meter. Don't believe it. Fix the amount, fix the distance. Oh, sorry, my meter is broken. No, don't rely on that. So when you enter the taxi, finalize everything. Sometimes you go into your hotel and say, hey, you know, it's overbooked. The hotel has closed down. They want to take you somewhere else. They want to rob you. They want to extort you. Be cautious of that. Some people come with hadaya, bracelet, tasbees, rosemaries. They, they, they give you hadaya to, to con you. So be very careful. Don't take anything from anybody. Spills on your clothing. You are walking, something spills on your clothes and somebody comes and cleans it. So there's a stranger there to wipe it off to help you and by the time you know it, your wallet and purse is gone. Then uh, fake police officers. So somebody comes and he's discussing with you. He maybe ask you for directions but uh, policemen come and they are fake officers and this person is a drug dealer. And they say you are dealing with a, 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 a drug dealer, they want to arrest you. They ask for your passport, for your wallet. It's all a scam. Be very cautious. Try to see through people. You go into a destination, they tell you this attraction is closed, this tourist area is being closed now, it's not operative, it's the wrong times. They want to take you somewhere else. Be cautious as well. When you're in an ATM, somebody is there to help you as well. Be very cautious. Some people in the line are part of the thieves, injured, child beggars, blind, deaf, pregnant ladies. They've got helpers. They ask you for money. Be very cautious of them. Some people come to you for directions. That also. Then you want everything for free, cheap. So the Wi-Fi hubs, they are fake Wi-Fi hubs. So it looks easy, you just logged on these hotspots, uh, there's hackers there that want to get all your all your information, your passwords, your online accounts, so you have to be very careful. Likewise, uh, at the airport, a lot of your information is breached when you use airport Wi-Fi's, so try to pay, it'll cost you a little bit, but don't rely on, on, on freebies, they come with a price. So, uh, Sometimes you rent a, a vehicle, a car, and um, somebody bumps you, a motorcycle, a small accident when you come in from the airport. So different scenes, different scams. Somebody comes to you and says, you know what, the plane ticket, the train ticket, you went for a certain um, place and, and they've got this ticket half the price. These are all fakes, they're scammers. You'll pay for the ticket and it's a fake, it's a scam. Some people come with rare commodities, yes, gemstones, yes, Persian carpets, yes, diamonds, gold. It's, it's your get rich scheme. You'll go back to your country and make millions. They would have done it themselves. So many people travel abroad, especially for these deals. Oh, it's stuck in customs. You need to get it released. You need to get it free. You need to pay the some amount. Oh, the UN needs it. They'll meet you with the UN agent. They, they, they professional syndicates and we unprofessional fools. You're in the hotel room and there's a hotel wake-up call. So from the front desk, they want to confirm that uh, you're booking for the hotel and your credit card details. It's a scam. Likewise, they use beautiful women, flirtatious women, to trap people as well. People get drugged, people get robbed, people uh, lose a lot of things. So... You have to be very careful when traveling and uh, know how to identify all these places which are part of the scam as well. The amal for today is to, to utilize the miswak, 
لقد امرت بالسواك حتى خشيت ان يوحى الي فيه شيء I've been commanded to utilize the miswak so much, I was afraid revelation would come, wahi would come down, and it would have become compulsory and incumbent on the ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect one and all and give us tawfiq of making amal. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.